put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Death Rally 1996 Video Game Review I'm not sure there actually is a plot to this game, but basically you're a racer, you start at the bottom of the top 20 with zero points, and you have to work your way up to the top. And when you get there, you will be challenged by the adversary, who, if we are to believe the cutscene that introduces him, has just been waiting behind a door for this exact moment. I really hope he had a magazine or something to pass the time. And if you are able to defeat him in a one-on-one -on -one race in a unique arena, actually unique, it's called the arena, but it's the, it's the level, unique level, then you will have won the game. This is a top-down racer with guns and the ability to destroy the other cars, and that in, in fact being a genuine strategy. I will not be making particular comments about the remake in this video, as I already did a video on that remake, and I, have, I said everything I wanted to say about the remake in that. And in case you don't want to watch that entire video, here's the short version, get this game instead. Heck, it's actually, it's freeware, so there's not even any money spent, and it's just much more fun, if at all you can deal with the retro graphics. The graphics are actually fairly good for their time. And this is a lot like the original Grand Theft Auto. It's, it's not as open a world, but it has that same mature approach. This was, you know, the, the mid-90s was when video games got to be more mature, with more out-and-out -out violence. And this, like Grand Theft Auto, is very bloody. You can kill people that you don't really have to, I mean, the people standing around cheering you on in the various levels, you can mow them down, you can run, a, run them over, and there's absolutely no penalty to that. I'm not sure it actually gives you any kind of a bonus, but there's no, it never complains about that, and there'll just be this big pool of blood left from not even like any body parts or anything. And it also has drugs, so yeah. And the the title of Death Rally is quite accurate. There is a lot of cars, yeah, just getting blown up in this game. The basic gist of it is that you are racing for the lead, and every whenever you race you have three different difficulties of race in in addition to the overall three difficulty settings to offer a bit of you know challenge for different levels of expertise in the game and in racing games and these three difficulty settings you know you have an easy race, which is for like the first two of the, I think, seven cars or so, and which will net you 750 bucks if you win the top spot, if, if you come out in the lead in that race, and three points towards the, you know, reaching the top spot in the top 20. The medium race, which will net you 3,000 bucks, and five points, and the hard, which
gets you 12 grand and 10 points. And keep in mind, the other racers in the top 20, who you also race against, they're also conducting races. So you actually do have to, you know, you start at the bottom and the people at the top are also earning points and they've got really nice cars to begin with. And yes, of course, the, the medium race is for like the, the third and fourth car you get, whereas the final race is for the last two cars. Or three cars, something like that. And yeah, you actually do have to win a lot of races, including several hard ones. And by the way, the 12,000, it sounds like a massive amount of prize money and you could say that it is but do note that whenever you buy a new car everything gets more expensive with this new car so you're going to need that money spending money is basically I should first say every single race has you starting with a full amount of boost charge and a full ammo, full clip, I don't know. Every single car has at least one machine gun. And, well, I think it's like, it's a revolver for the first couple of guns. It looks like an automatic to me. And as you graduate through the cars, you will eventually get to cars that have two machine guns on them, and the final one has two chain guns on it. Yeah, it's pretty badass. Helping to make up for the fact that it's not terribly varied. This, that's one thing that the newer one has. It has more rule sets and it has more than one gun. Whereas this, only one rule set and only one gun. But yes, the you, you start with full boost and full ammo for your gun. And if you repair, you will also have full, you know, your car will have been repaired. Which you may want to, that's actually one of the various financial decisions and that segues nicely into the financial decisions and what you can buy. If you complete a race but you're pretty messed up, but you just barely have enough money for the next car, you might just want to consider not repairing your car but just being really careful and still managing to win, earning just enough money to buy the next car because you don't really have to repair it. You can only have one car in this game at any point, so whenever you buy a new car, you trade in your old one and you get some of a discount on the next car. It also depends on what upgrades it may have and the like. And do know, you never get the full money back. You know, it's 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 been spent, you know, that that car has seen some damage to it, so you may have repaired it, but yeah. They don't give you the full money back. And yeah, you may want to consider not fully repairing your car, and do you need to repair it, or do you need this other thing? Now these other things, like I said, you, you start with a full boost charge, but you can also buy rocket fuel. You can use the boost charge regardless, but if you use rocket fuel, you'll get this nice little, yeah, it literally has the, the jet exhaust thing on the back and the car will go much faster. Also, burning out the car gradually because it's rocket fuel. It's not supposed to go in a car. This is, by the way, also something you buy in the underground market, not the official market. Even Death Rally has some standards. And, yeah, it, it will slowly burn out your car, but it'll also give you a massive boost. And that's something you, you may want to consider. Do you, do you really want to be using that? And I should also note that the, the extra equipment you have to buy before every race, if you want to use it at all. I guess it just gets, you know, removed. After I don't know, maybe there's an inspection and they just quickly ditch it. And yes, these things, like I said, get more expensive the bigger and better the car you have. That goes for the upgrades, these extra things, and the repairs to the car. Now the other extra things are the spikes, 
which are attached to the front bumper, I guess? I'm not a car person. And, yeah, I think the chariot race from Ben-Hur, you basically smack right into cars and do a lot more damage than, well, more damage, anyway, than usual. And then there is the sabotage, which grants you a random amount of damage done, anywhere from, I think it's 25% to 49% on a randomly chosen opponent car. So, no matter how much you spend on the sabotage, it may be really good or it may be really bad. And it may be an opponent, opponent that you would otherwise have a lot of trouble with, or it might be an opponent that you don't really need to. So it's always, do you want to take the chance that this is going to be really useful? Because again, it gets costly. And finally, as far as equipment goes, that is illegal, there are the mines, which you drop directly behind your car, and they're really good at taking your people who are like just behind you. And they do a fair amount of damage, actually. And really, you know, they, they give the other car just a little bit of pause, and that's enough to really make them lose their position in the race. And you get like a dozen mines or something, so it's, yeah, it's, it's quite useful. And the, now the, the more, yes, the, the final illegal thing is that you can, there, there's a loan shark who for some reason wears, I guess, a, a mix between like a wrestler mask and Zoro's mask. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe it's just an alternate reality where it's the fashion. He will borrow you some money, the greater amount by the greater the car you have, but he will expect you to repay with interest. And if you, don't, if you can't pay, he's going to take one of your car upgrades. And this also some sometimes you will be offered a mission, and this will typically be that you have to pick up some drugs and win the race, or that you have to kill a specific one of the other cars. I don't think you have to win the race for that one, but yeah. And if you accept this mission, you are expected to pull through. And I think if you fail to kill, if you get the assassination mission and you fail to kill the other guy. I think he also takes one of your upgrades, so yeah. And that brings me nicely into the upgrades. Every car has a certain amount of upgrades to the, the tires, the engine, and the armor. And basically, the, the better the car, the more upgrades it'll take. And obviously, the more effective it'll become. And you can really tell if you've upgraded something or not, especially stuff like the armor, and, well, yeah, really all three. The handling is a world of difference between, you know, you, you start out with this crappy little, I think it's VW Bug or something like that, and, you know, you end up with this, I think it's based on, like, the Mach 5 from, what's it called, Speed Racer? I read that online. I, I did not watch Speed Race. I've watched the movie, but only because of the Wachowski Brothers. And played the game, which I actually do enjoy. But yeah, it's... There, there's a huge amount of difference in how well they handle, and it is worth it to play through the game to get to the final car and get to enjoy using that. Like I said, I'm not really into cars. I rarely play car games at all. But I enjoy when it's so well done, and there's such a... You, you earn it! It's not just you, you get in a car and it just hands... It's like playing one of the Grand Theft Auto games. You can really tell if you've gotten a good car or just an eh one, you know. There's, there really is a world of difference. And to, to finish off with the financial decisions, you have to make that difficult choice of do you want to 
upgrade your current car, which will make it easier for you to win races, but it will also spend the money you've saved up during the one races, or do you want to save up for the next car? Because no matter what, until you get to the final car, there's always a better car, which is much more expensive than your current one. And of course, if you don't upgrade your current car, it'll be harder to earn money for the next car. So that really is, and it'll depend very much on what the players want. And that's where we get some nice freedom. And, and replayability. You might replay it and try it a different way. I mean, I found myself skipping one car altogether because it was just, it didn't seem like it would make that much of a difference and because I didn't buy that car, much less try to upgrade it, I got to the final car quicker. And yeah, other people might not make that decision and that's, yeah, it's up to the individual. I should maybe say it only took me about two and a half hours total to complete the game this time. But again, it's it's fairly replayable. There's a lot of randomization. That's one thing I want to... I would compare the buying of cars and the decision to either save up for a really good one or just hurrying up and buying the next one to buying weapons and Raptor Call of the Shadows from the same period of time. Where it's also very much, I mean that game has like, I don't know, 20 different weapons. And some of them you might find, well, do I really need this one or should I save up for, you know, twice that amount and get the even better weapon? Which one do I want? Which one will I keep? All this stuff. And while Death Rally cannot match that game in sheer intensity. It does top it in randomization. Well, really, Rapture Call of the Shadows has almost no randomization. I'm not sure there is any, actually. And, yeah, this, this has a lot of randomization. You, you can save and load between every race, and even if you load, you know, say you want to try a race, several times in a row, it'll be different racers, it'll be different race tracks, even if you choose the same difficulty of race, and it'll, it, it might really, really vary. Some of them are very aggressive, some of them not so much, and there is a real sense of, it's, it's very dynamic. You, you really have to adjust to what is happening in the race. Is someone, you know, really just going right for the lead or is someone trying to stay behind you and shoot you and stuff like that? And that's also something, there are four ca four cars in almost every race, really only the adversary race differs and that's because there's only the two of you. And that makes it quite feasible of a strategy to try to destroy the other three. You have a certain amount of ammo and more might pop up, you might have mines, maybe you've sabotaged one of them, maybe you have the spikes. And and they will also be trying to destroy each other. And by the way, you as well, so you want to know that. By the way, you can play without guns, which really just makes it a regular top-down racing game that completely eliminates you know, not, not only the machine gun, but also the spikes, the mines, all that stuff, so it's possible if you want it. Anyway, the... Yes, you, you have to decide between... You know, and I'm just listing the two extremes here. Staying behind and trying to destroy the other cars with your machine gun and avoiding their mines, or racing for the lead and having three angry cars with machine guns behind you. So, yeah, the, the, both are very, very dangerous. And the, the music is very cool. It really gets you pumped up. I will say that the, the written parts are pretty goofy. The lingo is really overdone. They were trying way too hard. It's this thing of, you know, near, near the, yeah, like the, the mid to late 90s and such. There is a lot of stuff that was like really 
extreme, and this was no exception, and it really, it's, it reeks of adults trying to cater to teenagers, but yeah, you can just ignore them, so. Now, if there, there are bonuses for different more or less unlikely scenarios, such as winning a race, or getting through a race at least, with 0% damage to your car, if you get a, a winning streak, and if you destroy all other cars. In fact, that last one, literally the Grim Reaper himself will come and thank you for adding more cars to his domain. Yeah, that, yeah. And, and by the way, if you do die, you'll have to repair your car from scratch and you lose any cash bonuses that you collected. Which brings me nicely to the pickups. I already mentioned, well yeah, I already mentioned both ammo and cash. In addition to that, you can pick up, there's this mushroom that makes the screen kind of wavy. I think the idea is to try to avoid it. You can pick up more boost. And there are also wrenches, repairs for the car. And all of these appear randomly, and you may have to arrange your car a little so that you'll hit. You see, you can't see very far in front of yourself, so if you, if you actually want to pick up the, yeah, the pickup on the, you know, right after you see it, you'll have to drive really effectively to maneuver into that position. You might lose a lead or the like. You might get yourself into a bad position. So it's a quick decision. Do I really need that thing? Or do I really need to keep it from the other guy? You know, Am I in the lead? Do I have a lot of damage already? And is that ammo? If I don't pick it up, one of the other three will, and they'll blow me up. So, yeah. And the... Yeah, it's, it's a very addictive game. You might play for just a few minutes, which you totally can. You can play just one race, save, and then do, go do something else. But you're probably going to play several races. And it's highly tense, because every race lasts just a few minutes. And throughout, you know, your opponent opponents are going to go for the you know, for, for winning. They they want to win just as well as you do. And they're going to try to blow you up or at least get you out of their way. And like I said, it's perfectly feasible for them to do so. Especially if you don't like if you don't take care if and if you don't upgrade armor. And even so, like I said, upgrades get expensive and even though it's, even if you win one of the big races if you win a hard race and you earn that 12 grand, that might be gone just like that. Now, the various... Yeah, I already mentioned that. The, the various other racers, some of them have... This is again where it gets a little goofy. Some of them have names that are like supposed to make you think of Hollywood stars. That are, like there's a Jane Honda, a Greg Peck, and a Clint West. And then there are famous characters like Bill and Ted. I think they're called like Farmer Ted and something. But it's Bill and Ted. And Duke Nukem, because this is 3D, 3D Realms, you know, so why not? And it's actually seriously badass to drive against Duke Nukem. And... That, it's very quick and easy to get into. The game... It doesn't really have... It, it doesn't have tutorial levels or the like, but... As you, you know, you start a game... And when you first see a menu, when you first see the regular shop menu, it tells you this is where you can buy this and that. When you first see the black market, which I think is after your first race, you, yeah, it tells you this is where you can get this and this. And, yeah, it's, it's, you get into it just like that. There's almost no buttons to keep track of, uh, you know, other than just steering your car. You've got... I think you have a handbrake, although I tend not to use it. You've, then you've got like a trigger for your machine gun, the boost for 
the boost, and dropping mines, and that's it. That is everything that you need. Now, there are 19 levels, and this really helps the randomization, clearly. And it should be noted that about half of them are the, basically the same as the other half, just swapped 180 degrees and recolored. I suppose that more or less covers it. I will say, one thing I've found quite annoying is if you if you hit a wall, for example, it takes your car a ridiculous amount of time to get back into sort of yeah to, to get back out of that and get back in the race. I don't know if this was intentional, and it seems to be with every single car, but that is very frustrating. And like I said, it might be intentional because it is in a lot of ways a challenging game. And the final thing to say is, if, if you're in the top 20 and you don't take care to not only rise in the ranks, but also at least maintain your position, like if you lose a bunch of races in a row, like I said, the other cars, they're racing all the time. They're, they're racing every time you're racing. So when you don't make points, and they do, they might rise above you in the top 20. So, yeah. And in closing, this game does not hold your hand. It just throws you into it. Like I said, it'll, it'll tell you basically what you can do, but from there on out, it's your decision how you want to spend your money, basically what races you want to do, although it will not let you take an inferior car into a race. But, you know, say you just feel like just completely demolishing the opposition and you take the most expensive car into the easy race. It's not going to stop you, but like I said, there might be consequences if you just, if you don't maintain your position in the top 20. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.